And welcome to Kitty Talks. We share inspirational life stories that empower you to create yours. Today, I have with me James Gordon Graham. James, welcome. Hi, Kitty. Thank you for having me on the show. Now, I'm extremely excited to have you on the show today, James, because I know uh, you're an expert in multi-dimensional being. You're going to share a lot with us today. James is a revolutionary entrepreneur. Uh, he was a pioneer of the internet and cloud computing. Uh, and I'm very excited to have him here today because he's going to share not only his journey about how he got doing what he is today, but he has some incredible insights, I think, that you guys are going to enjoy about our soul's journey. So, James, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> yeah, it's great to be here. I'd love for you to just tell us a little bit about what you're doing in the world at the moment, just so our listeners can get a feel for your work. Okay, well, right now, um, I'm just launching two very exciting new courses, and they're internet-based courses. So um, it is part of what I do. Um, the other part is I create uh, documentary movies. Okay. So I've moved from, like, the computing world and engineering into more media creation, and it's, it's due to a journey I took over the last 20 years, well, really 16 years after I actually left the, uh, the computer business. And I went around the world trying to understand things more fully. Uh, in business, I can never understand why so many people couldn't get there, couldn't really get the creativity out there. Well, what was stopping them? And I was, I was, you know, very frustrated myself, even though you could say, you know, on the surface, we were extremely successful. We were. We had, you know, a company that created the internet in the sense of cloud computing. And that's a, an amazing first. Or, you know, it's created a whole new genre of life, actually, for everybody. But, um, you know, there's very few people get to that level. And I used to see maybe one or maximum 3% of people really making it in life. And I can never understand this. I, you know, so many people, I mean, have such great ideas and such great creativity. I, I, I just didn't understand why they couldn't actually get their, their products and services out there more fully. So after I, I left business, I tried to understand what was going on in life in a, in a, in a kind of more multidimensional level. And it was a journey I took that really went step by step. I first of all was thinking, you know, is there something wrong with me physically? You know, do I need to change my diet? Do I need to, you know, physically heal myself somehow? And that led to the emotional side. And that for me has been the most important thing probably I've, I've learned over my journey is how emotions really work and the importance of, of emotional energy or emotional intelligence in business or, or, or anywhere else. And then from, from that, it led more into a more kind of mystical side of things, where I started to really understand how the multi-dimensions work on, on a lot of different levels. And in that bit, I started to understand why people were being blocked. And okay. one of my courses is called Hidden Knowledge of the Elite. And of course, when I listed my company on the stock markets, and I met a lot of these elite people, you know, the, the top bankers, the top brokers, all these very, very powerful people, people in the city of London. And they're just part of a bigger picture that's going on. And over the years, I've, I've got so much knowledge about this now, but how these systems are controlled. <clears throat> and ultimately, what's actually going on is, is, um, is almost a deliberate um, attempt to stop a lot of this creativity coming out uh, from people. So... My course shows exactly what these people do, how they interact with the multi-dimensions, and really um, how then to empower yourself by yeah. understanding this. And this is the most important thing because a lot of people just go through life not understanding. You know, it's like Pink Floyd, you know, when, when they say, you know, somebody shot the starting gun and it was 10 years ago and you, you haven't moved, you know. It's, there's some, some great musicians and people understand, you know, that people feel frustrated and haven't really got the voice into the world and um, then after understanding that it's very easy to sort of point fingers and, and blame people and go well you know these people are behaving you know against humanity and so on but then you I went to a different level and I started to understand the soul and um, 
this was something that's it's, it's quite unique because I've tried to find so much information on this, but I actually saw the human soul. And what it meant for me was uh, a, a massive um, new phase of my life started. And I started to, to understand even higher than these, these elite people and, and other things is that there are so many things in the multi-dimensions that interact with humanity. And they're not all bad. You know, there's a lot of very powerful good things happening. And everything actually is, is in balance. And one of the, the, the key things I've come out with all of this is that when you look at it in its totality, in its totality of consciousness, mm -hmm. what we're doing is we're evolving our consciousness. Humanity is evolving as consciousness through each individual. The 7 billion people who are on the planet today will not be on the planet in 100 years from now. Each of those is doing their part individually to, to enhance and develop their own consciousness and their own mm, evolution. their own evolution yeah and that in a wider sense um because we're all connected yeah uh actually is evolving humanity's consciousness so that's been my journey from through the business of not of being blocked and not understanding and then you know going into like pointing a finger at people going look he's doing this and this this elite's doing this and we're stopping people and, and so on and then understanding well there's a reason for that and then higher than that, we're looking at the, the evolution of, of, of uh, our consciousness. And one of the things that we love doing with our interviews, James, you know, the whole point of Kitty Talks is to show people that they can live and manifest and create lives, different lives in alignment with their soul. Yeah. You know, so from what you're saying, if each of us took care of our own little part, then obviously we have an impact on the planet and shifting consciousness. Yeah, we, we, I think we're all doing a, a very important job, all of us. And um, even if it's people who are seemingly negative, um, what they're doing is, I, I, if we go back to the emotional part, because for me, the emotions are the key technology that is driving our conscious evolution. Okay. So when you go into um, emotions and understand what they're really doing, you find that they, um, on, a, on a sort of human level, they are making us think in a certain way, giving us beliefs in a certain way, and giving us physical actions in a certain way. But it's coming from the engine room of these emotions. These emotions may not be conscious. They may be hidden. In a lot of people, when you're growing up or in past lives, they've taken on board a huge amount of emotional uh, energy that they don't know they've got. So when we go through life, what, what's happening is we're meeting people all the time who are showing us the hidden aspects of what's inside us emotionally. Then we can actually make that conscious. Then it's like a positron and electron coming together and creating the photon light. It's like you collapse the emotion into light. And this is the, the sort of, I suppose you call it becoming enlightened, but you do it bit by bit by bit. It's not just something you switch on that happens. And is that because obviously when you look at vibrations and, and emotions, you know, they have different levels of vibration effectively. So what you're saying is that we're working through to a higher vibration. Yeah. I, I, when, when you collapse the perhaps the lower vibrations of the fear, the anger, all this, this sort of low vibrationary uh, activity, then um, you, you are becoming... Um, more enlightened and um, but that's not to say that those things are bad because sometimes you can use anger in a positive way so it's becoming conscious of it rather than getting rid of it yes but we are all of this you know whether you are dark or light with a lot whether you like it or not you you know but it's whether you're really conscious of it or not that's the key and so for me when I actually was in business for example I started to do emotional work in 1996. I had a, an experience where we were, we were trying to get our first contract, big contract. We were the submarine manufacturer of Furness. I'd done this, this presentation a hundred times. You know, I stood up in front of these directors and it was just so difficult. And, and it was like, it was like heavy and I was stressed and I was tired. I've had, I don't know if you know the IT industry very well, but you know, if you're at the top levels of, um, sales and marketing and, and software development for year after year after year. And the American model really puts pressure on you to do well and to, you know, perform and to, you know, get get quotas in and get money in and so yeah. on. 
So I was I was stressed, and uh, I'd had ten years of that before I started my company. Then we we had like three, two or three years. It was nineteen ninety six, and I was just so tired. And um, I, I kind of stumbled through this presentation, and I just said, you know, I don't care what it takes. There's got to be more to life. And that was the start of my journey. And as I say, I went through the physical, I went through emotional, and then eventually into the more mystical and, and sort of multidimensional side of things. And I, I, I do understand things a bit better. And um, uh, but I'm still, I'm still doing it. You know, I mean, nobody is is, is some sort of perfect being. You know, we are all on this journey together. And we're, and when you meet somebody in the street, they're showing you something. They're showing you something that's hidden inside you emotionally. And you have the chance to make that conscious because becoming conscious of what's driving you, that then you can you can consciously decide what to do with it. And so just going back to what you were saying then, so when you were in your IT career, would you say you were working through maybe karma, your genetic patterning, like in that respect, or how would you describe that? I think we all have, I mean you could call it karma. I mean I, I just I just call it hidden emotions. You know, we all have that that's from past lives. I, I, um, the soul just doesn't come in once and goes. You know, right. it's, it's a lot more technology and more than that. And we we inhabit many lifetimes. And of course, in each lifetime, the soul is growing its its own consciousness and collecting it. So we all are. But, but you know, if you if you look at uh, just one lifetime, um, you know, you, you you're going to be living. Yeah, upwards of up to 100 years usually, something like that. And uh, you know, you've got a chance to really develop yourself. And if you look at it in a, in this is quite advanced for somebody to understand this, but if you consider that the soul sits in a timeless zone, so as you go through the dimension, we're in 3D, and we're in linear time. So what that means is that uh, you know I've got a bus to catch at six o'clock, and if I'm not there, it'll, I'll miss it. But with the soul, it's 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 attached to us, and it's it is generating through light um, our body. Um, but it's also sitting in a timeless zone. So, if you consider <clears throat> that, what does timeless mean? Well, if timeless is something where there's no past, present, or future, what's actually happening is that, um, in the sense that um, it's just a now situation the soul has actually designed this lifetime before you come down and it's designed it in a way where it maximizes its growth your growth in in any set say 100 years you 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 are going through all these series of meeting people and events and outside things and family things and work things and they're all emotionally interacting with you and that is your 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 life lessons, and that's what you're doing. In terms of, and so it's quite a hard concept to understand. That you've actually designed that for yourself <laughs> before mm. you come down, because everybody goes, "Oh, I'm a terrible life." And then... Well, I, you know, you and I had a quick chat before we we came on air, and um, I truly believe that we uh, have a path that our soul has mapped out. You know, I've had so many instances and examples of my life where I can prove that, but. What baffles me is what I was saying to you before was how do they how do they how does it know at what pace I'm gonna go? Or how does it know what I'll choose like if it's all mapped out, then can I just sit in my living room and you know? Well th this is the thing that, that um, it, it's so hard to do um understand. You still have to go through what you're going through. You you know, it, it, it's called uh, my, my partner actually calls it living from C squared. C squared is the speed of light squared. So in, in Einstein's equations, E equals MC squared. The speed of light squared is a dimension. It's one of the dimensions. And it's like the kind of like uh, mirror dimension to this one. And um, and so if you are living, if you, if you understand, excuse me, that the soul, <coughs> can I just get a drink in here? Yeah, sure. We allow we allow you to, to have drinks of water. Yeah. So yeah. So if, if you consider um, that oh, I've lost track of what I said. So if you consider the soul is yeah. um, it is really creating your life for you uh, before you incarnate, then yeah. it's very hard for people to oh yeah, I'm talking about C squared. That's right. So 
it's very hard for people to really get a grip around that because they go, well, what's the purpose of life? I might as well just sit back and do nothing. Well, <laughs> if you do do that, then you've designed that because you've got to learn the lesson. <laughs> that actually, that's what's going to give you. But it's much more pleasurable in life to really do things and to interact with people and to learn from people and, and you know, play sports if you love that or, or do work that you love or get creativity that you love doing. And, you know, if you can do all that, you know, it's a very pleasurable thing to be there. Um, but there's, you know, there's a lot of things that, uh, you know, cause a lot of people a lot of pain as they grow up. I mean, I, I you know, had a, a very difficult childhood. I can't remember much of it, but up to nine years old. Uh, there's, there's a lot of um, emotional abuse going on. And, and, you know, and I've had to come out of all that and understand, you know, that, that these people, it's not about forgiveness because, um, it's about understanding that everybody is a teacher to you, okay. so that so that if if somebody is is doing something really nasty to you, um, ultimately you can blame them to start with, and then you can you know try and get rid of it and and you know do what whatever you need to do. But ultimately, they are showing you what's hidden inside you, and. Um, Therefore, there are teachers. So ultimately, it's not about forgiveness. It's about understanding that everybody, good or bad, is a reflection. Interacting with you to give you a chance to emotionally change what you are as a person. And um, see, if you forgive somebody, very often it means, well, you know, it's okay to do that again. Well, it's not okay to do that again, actually. Um, you know, very often it's, it's going, I, I don't accept what you've done. Um, but I, but once you 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 get what they're teaching you, which is a a, uh, a certain emotion that's hidden in you, what actually happens is the emotion collapses into light, and you actually never see this person again. You don't need to forgive them because you never see them again. They just come right out of your radar. So it's the emotion that you need to get from the interaction. Absolutely. If you don't need to forgive somebody, what you need to do is to get that emotion, do the work to collapse it. And that person will never be in your radar ever again. And but well, how do you know what emotion it is you're supposed to get? Well, because if somebody, okay, I had an instant outside here. I just moved to this house a year or so ago, and this guy was parking his mini outside the window, and we're right next to the road here. So, um, I said, "Can you please move your car?" And 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 he just said no. And he wouldn't do it. And I got <laughs> angry, and I thought, you know, I would never do that to somebody. <laughs> you know, that's really disrespectful. You know, it's really rude. Um, and um, I was furious. I was really angry. And so I, I went into it and I thought, what's going on here? You know, where am I, you know, being disrespectful to people? You know, where, what is it I'm doing? And I, so I asked my partner, my dear, I said, you know, what do you think all this disrespect is about, all, all this, this, this anger? And she said, well, do you, have, do you ever notice the way you drive? So I said, what do you mean? She said, but you're always driving so fast on the motorways. You're cutting up people. You know, you're pissing people off. You don't even know you're doing it. <laughs> so, so, you see what I mean? So, okay. me, that inside me was this person. The world was showing it to you in another place. Yeah. And so when I got that, and I go, okay, I am being disrespectful, actually, because... Yeah, you know, I'm just putting myself above above other people on the road. You know, I can drive as fast as I want, blah, blah, blah. So, um, and as soon as I got that, I've never seen this guy again. And, and in fact, just actually, this last week, I think he's moved. I'm not just, this last two weeks, I've just <laughs> I'm not no. so bad at it, you see? I have, I have heard that. I have heard that in a different form in different guys, like, you know, where, like, for example, if you're waiting for money, like, where are you holding on to money? Or, you know, I've heard it in Feng Shui where they say you might have um, something breaking down or leaking in your house and it shows up in your personal life. Or, you know, where, like, it's a sign for you to look at almost. But what tends to happen, first of all, is somebody, you know, crosses your boundaries and, you know, emotionally evokes you, is that you will react to it. And it'll be a reaction. <clears throat> you know, either an anger or hatred or something or negative, or it actually could be the opposite. It could be through a very compassionate, loving reaction. And, you know, that could be something hidden in you that needs to you know, come out more as well. The, the, the beautiful side of you, the, the, you know, the, the, the 
compassionate side of you, which you may not be showing very much. And um, you know, somebody could be bringing that bit out of you. And so everything is balanced. And therefore, this is why people say everything's in perfection. Because even though all this darkness and evil is happening, you've, you've still got this light and this beauty and love and compassion, which is always there. And it's up to you whether you, you, know, you collapse this and become conscious of, of both extremities. And once you do that, um, you're starting to live in a more conscious way. And what's your um, thoughts on, as we do this work, you know, as we're conscious beings, as we are consciously working through our stuff, um, you know, I have experienced my, my own life where people have just fallen away. It's almost like we're out of a, br- a vibration with one another. Um, is that what tends to happen? Do you think that people... As you you're, funny, you're out of vibration with them anymore because you've changed your vibration or they've changed their vibration and that's it. You, you, you don't need to, you know, be interacting with them anymore. You learn what you need to learn emotionally. Um, but, but the thing is that sometimes you don't. And, and for example, how many times have you heard, you know, somebody say, well, I, you know, I had my first wife and, you know, I couldn't, you know, get on with her and so we divorced and then... <coughs> Same thing happened with your second wife. Yeah, you know, the next love of my life and, you know, and then suddenly you get in with this person and then as the honeymoon period falls away, suddenly your, your, you know, your, your raw hidden emotions start to come out. And that suddenly, exactly the same situation was happening with the first person. And how many times that happen? Unless you, if you do the work, the next yes. thing you get will be different. And do you agree? Because I, again, I have, um, unless we get the lesson, that the lesson gets bigger. So, like you said, unless we collapse or, or get the emotion that we're supposed to feel, would you agree that? Because I've had instances in friends or family or even my own life where the same ha- scenario is ha- playing out but in a slightly different form and but the lessons are getting bigger yeah i mean they they will tend to escalate until you get it right um because your soul is going you got to get this you got to get this you know you, you know and, and it's it's a strange thing to say that if the soul is already designed this <laughs> it's like you've got to go through this and collapse it and you know in terms of you know, the bigger picture of where humanity is going. I don't know. You know, I don't know, you know ultimately why we're doing all this. I, I do know we're becoming more conscious. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe it means that we move to a different type of civilization. And certainly some of the things I've, I've understood over the years is that um, people, the Vedics, for example, call um, the 26,000 year cycle um, moving from a golden age to a dark age to a golden age. So you know, 13,000 years and then so you, you know, track this and, and, and you know it could be correct this in the sense that we go from um, amazing light beings kind of people will call it Lemuria into Atlantis to falling so as Atlantis fell into what we're coming into Egypt and then through Greece and then through the Roman Empire and then through into where we are today as, as, as a civilization we're in a very dark sort of period we're coming out of right now and and yet, the perfection still exists in that because unless you go through that darkness, you can't become conscious of it to then become even higher in light than you ever have been before as a mm. as a group of, or, you know, humanity's group soul. Mm. So those twenty five thousand year cycles or twenty six thousand year cycles, we call it the um, precession of the equinoxes, the, the wobble of the Earth around its axis. Many ancients have called it uh, different things, but um, I think it goes back even much. I think it goes back millions and millions of years. Are, are actually evolution, and um, you know they found in Tanzania, you know footprints in uh, Mary Leakey found the three point five million year old human footprints in in some volcanic ash, and it's very easy to determine the age of volcanic ash. And um, you know the the the, the the, the sort of academic world tends to ignore all this if it doesn't fit in with their paradigm. But I think that we, we as, as uh, the, the true evolution is a light evolution, not a physical Darwinian evolution. It's, it's an evolution of consciousness. And I think that uh, we have bodies and, and um, you know, it allows us to you know, go into this great darkness. And as we come out of this, 
eventually, many thousands of years from now, the possibility exists that we will go back into light bodies and, and all these interdimensional beings that are interacting with us, you know, it'll kind of form a, a, a kind of one piece of consciousness. And what's your opinion on those uh, civilizations having uh, almost ascended? Because that's something that I have come across in my... Yeah. Um, you, you get these, um, these, these cults and these people who go through this. And, um, but even like ancient Egypt, you know, how do they explain the pyramids, you know? Yeah. Well, the... the just on the ascension bit you're saying to me if you i think we're all collectively ascending through this conscious evolution that is our ascent that is our ascent okay so if you take the pyramids as a time period that's that's in a time period where it really started to accelerate into darkness so from a, a light beautiful compassionate where everybody's uh, in telepathy everybody is is just in a, a total harmony of oneness then click, something happens, and you start to fall into this dark age again. And Egypt was just one of one of the areas in there. And this is where you, you this is where it starts to you know, potentially start to freak people out because if you look at the pyramid texts, they actually show how the the, the gods interbred with humans about twenty five thousand years ago, thirty five thousand years ago actually. And they've got a, a, a chronology, they've got the actual dates, they've got the actual people who did it. And these gods and humans, whatever they were, Neanderthals or whatever they were, I don't know. Uh, so it was quite interesting. Now Neanderthals just suddenly, you know, became extinct overnight. And suddenly this new species comes along called humans. I mean, where did they come from? And, and what it says in the pyramid text is that the gods interbred. And then you get these elite bloodlines and then they control humanity. And the idea is that there's, that this emotional energy can be used as a, as a sort of energy source uh, for these gods. So, yeah, that's all in the pyramid text. But what you're getting is not the big picture. And the big picture is, yes, OK, that's happening. But ultimately, these gods and humanity will, will come together. And we are collectively evolving. You get it. So although we're going into this darkness and we're coming out of this darkness now, What's actually happening is that we are all collectively evolving in consciousness. And so you know, your comment on Egypt is just one of those areas of that fall of consciousness as we go back towards uh, what, what they would call a golden age. Or, or to me, it's like uh, people would describe Lemuria as, as humans in light bodies, not in physical. But with total love, total compassion, total telepathy. Uh, this oneness of connection where, and to do that you have to be conscious everybody has to be conscious mm. to be conscious we are going through what we, we're going through on a day-by-day -day basis mm. it doesn't mean to say it's easy because you know living on this planet is sometimes extremely difficult i mean yeah you know, my uh my my part of my family my my lovely pussycat and mom is just passing over you know and uh it's, it's just so sad to see it it's fading away you know She's been with me 15, 16 years now. And uh, yes, it's, 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 it's really, really hard sometimes, you know. And uh, mm -hmm. even though I know that, you know, spirit will yeah, take soul, care of move on. I've actually seen a soul, you know, animals have soul. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So it is difficult. You, know, you learn that sadness, you learn you know, why at the same time. Well, I think, and you, you know, you talked earlier about emotions. I think, you know, emotions are the richness of life. And I do. You know, I think my own personal experience is I had to feel them. <laughs> yeah, that's what we all do. Absolutely. Yeah. So all our journeys are all different. Mm. Uh, and even these, you know, these elites and these royalties, they go through really difficult times. And, you know, in another lifetime, they're going to be you know, on the other end of the stick. But... Um, so what, I would uh, what, advice uh, would you, yeah. what advice would you have for our listeners you know people listening to kitty talks are they're listening to our interviews to empower them to create great lives in alignment with their soul so knowing i didn't, I didn't quite catch that last bit they're, 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 in they're, alignment yeah. in alignment when their soul with their soul yeah. you know um they're wanting to discover their purpose on the planet they're wanting to be part of the people that you're talking about who are 
shifting in consciousness and, you know, here to make a difference, basically. Um, knowing what you know now, what kind of advice would you have for our listeners about their path? I would say that, first of all, you can't get it wrong. You really can't, because um, although it could be extremely difficult, extremely tough, um, it could be enlightening, beautiful, you know, potentially amazing kind of world. Um, it, it's, it's, it's all your experience in that because you are growing in your own consciousness. You're developing yourself in the best possible way you can, given the, uh, this period of, you know, 70 to 100 years or whatever. It's, it could be a very short life. You know, and even that is, you know, learning, you know, very short lessons. Some great souls come down. You know, and, and aborted very quickly because they need to sort of ground themselves before they come in in the next incarnation. So we 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 all um, we all are going through what we need to go through to develop our consciousness, and you can't get it wrong. And no matter how hard and dark it is, or how light and beautiful it is, um, you are personally developing your own consciousness the best way you can. And that's a great place to come from, isn't it? Because I think as human beings, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves. Um, so actually, if we can come from that place, that actually everything's divinely perfect and happening for our, for us, um, then it kind of takes a lot of the pressure off that we might be feeling. Yeah. But when you're in a, in a very emotional exchange with somebody and you're extremely angry and you're upset, and it's hard to think like that. <laughs> yeah. And we, and, you know, I'm no different. Yeah, you know, I, I still get upset. And, uh, even though I know this stuff and so we're all doing the work all the time and, and so it's very important to always try and find that emotion try to understand where it is in you what needs to collapse in you in terms of the emotional light and then that situation will disappear and of course we'll just get another one because that's where we are in our journeys you know we will just keep doing this well, it's continual, isn't it? I, the way I look at it is that it is literally the, the onion analogy has been used many times, but it's true because as you work through something, you've got something else to work through. Just keep going. Yeah, as soon as you've got that bit, the next bit comes along and so on. So, yeah, it's, uh, <coughs> excuse me, it's, it's um, you, you can't, can't get it wrong though. And in, in a sense, if you, if you take that concept of living from C squared, you realize that you have planned your life very carefully before you come down it actually takes a lot of pressure off it actually makes you feel very um very much as if you know, things are meant to happen and although you you know you won't necessarily just sit there and do nothing all your life because um you know there's, there's so much to do in life and you will do it fantastic Fantastic. But that's a really, as we said, that's a great place to live from, um, knowing that we've kind of chosen our paths way before we've come in. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, will probably get very angry, actually, by thinking what I said there, because it's, it takes away the concept of free will. Mm. And everybody thinks they've got free will to do anything. In, in a soul level, of course, you do. It's just looking at it from the right level of, of consciousness. And if it is triggering you, then you, go, you have to go to... <laughs> Find the emotion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. What emotion in you do you need to look at? <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to Kitty Talks. Be sure to head over to our kittytalks.com website, become a member of our exclusive club, and you'll get free interviews and access to our private Facebook group, exclusive webinars, and secret success interviews. See you there.